like I will go like this, then I'll turn it and I'll go like this, then I'll turn it like this, and I'll turn it like this, and I'll also go diagonally into each corner. Okay, now I don't have to hold this paper anymore. It's stuck on there. And now, if, if you're using uh, a paper, uh, a paper-based uh, transfer medium, or what I'm saying is photo paper, the, uh, one of the things that you will notice is you'll start to see the uh, pattern actually transfer through the medium. And I'll, ha I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll pass that around when we get finished with this step and you'll see what I'm talking about. Then I'm probably going to go a little more than I would normally do because I want to be super successful on the first shot here. <laughs> okay? If, if you were making several copies of something, do you find it easier to work with each of them individually like this or do the whole panel in one piece? Since I have two things that I can't do very good, okay? I, one of them is cut out of a printed circuit board. I end up using a, uh, my, my uh, table saw, which I don't like using because it dulls the blade. And there's, I noticed out here we have a guillotine, and one of the things I wanted to try today was whether or not that would work to cut the, the uh, PC board material. Oh, yeah, it does. It works quite nicely. Okay. Tell about the metal shear. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it works well. Yeah, that's what you really need. And then <coughs> cut out, you know, for me, cutting out the blanks is a major step. And uh, if I could cut the blanks out real quick, and I have made a handful of these type of, of this board for this thing. Uh, in that case, I used, uh, you know, I just did them all together. I even etched them together. I just threw them in, and I'll show you what that means in here. Okay, now. So you're saying you, you did a same sheet like that, it's worth at a time? Oh, uh, no. <clears throat> I did three or four at a time is pretty much more than I want to do. Okay, now this is high, but I want you to pass it around because the next step uh, is for the cool. But I want you to see how the pattern kind of transfers through the paper. Is that how you know when you're done? Uh, it's a good Sorry. clue. It's a good clue. All right. Now, let's go one. While well, that's being passed around and we're waiting for it to cool, let's go to the next. Okay. Okay, most hobbyists, the most common types of PC yeah, laminate are uh, FR3 and FR4. That double-sided board that, uh, that I passed around that was kind of green, that is uh, FR4. The board that we're messing with, the one that's on this robot, is FR3. Now, occasionally, you'll run into FR2. That's what you see if you go buy a dollar radio at a dollar store and you tear it apart and it's got this really cheap, ugly printed circuit board that it's really, that's going to be FR2. That's the cheapest you can get. All right, but typically you're going to run in FR3 and FR4. Okay, now one of the things as a tip here is if you buy material from uh, eBay, one of the things you want to watch for is the substrate thickness. Uh, a lot of times they have very unusual thicknesses, usually thin. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention a source of that that you might want to do. But the normal one, a normal PC board like the one that's being passed around, is 1 16th of an inch thick, or sometimes you see it in mils, 62 to 70 mils. Okay. All right. They got this kind of stuff at like tanners, so you just go buy yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to show you, I'll give you all of that with prices. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are we doing on that? So we sit almost back. Is it cool? Cool to the touch? <coughs> Now, let me explain what's in there. This is water that would normally, I usually start with hot water, but cold water works just as good for this step. Why do I start with hot water? Well, it just seems like, seem like the thing to do. It's got a few drops of, of Dawn in it. Do you need it? Nah, probably not. But it seemed like the thing to do. So, I have this 
what we have here is a bucket of cold water with Dawn in it. And we stick our pattern in there. All right. And I usually wait about that long. Then I start taking my fifth thumb and I rub it in the middle. Okay. Now, rub your thumb in the middle there a little bit. See how the paper's coming out? You can almost immediately feel the paper coming out. You want to put your thumb on it and just. Yeah. Okay. It's, Anybody it's else want to? Mushing out what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just. It's mushing out. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's too excited here. Okay, <laughs> pass it around. <laughs> I'll learn. Okay. Well, he's passing that around and feeling how it's mushing up in the center there. Let's flip to the next foil. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay. Typically, you're going to be working with one ounce copper. Okay, and here's a little table to kind of give you a feel. Uh, if you buy on eBay, one of the things that you want to make sure you get specified is what size copper. Uh, one and a half, a uh, little light, and we'll talk about what the ramifications of that are. Um, if you're doing like motor controller boards that are maybe carrying lots of amperage, you, you might be doing two, two ounce or even more of copper. But these are the ones you're most likely going to run into and the one that you typically. So uh, for everybody, just to make sure everybody kind of puts this in perspective, a mill is a thousandth of an inch. So when it's only 1.4 inches, 1.4 mils, it's 1.4 thousandths of an inch. So that's how thin the copper is. 2.8 okay. is just about a hair. Is it? Okay. So now, now you can see you see how it's really starting. The paper's kind of starting to come off. If you're using the uh, the stuff from FedEx Kinko, it, the paper almost falls off. Okay. And I try to do it in the center first, and work my way out because it seems like the kind of thing to do, <laughs> okay? Uh, I have had a few times where a pattern kind of came off uh, in, chunks. in chunks and it seemed to always be at the edge. That's why I always say st stress that you heat the edge, make sure you're heating the edge. Right. See how it's coming off? Mm -hmm. You can see the pattern down there. I missed the part about the FedEx paper. Is that some free papers you can get? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the price. way, uh, on those two that were passed around, and I have I, I have some extras for uh, uh, the, the printed for this circuit board that you're willing to, you know to have scissors you can cut them out and take them with you. Uh, Try to leave some for everybody. Um, uh, you know, if you you want to use this for practice, and you don't want to have to learn how to do KeyCAD, you just want to see if you can do this. Cut off a couple of these patterns and go to town. Make sure you don't have the one that says <coughs> HP paper on the back because that's the butchered master that I had. Okay. Now, if you look at this point, you can see there's still paper on there. Okay, we will get a point when I just rub this off and, and look, man, I'm really rubbing on it. From coming from the semiconductor business, you know, and they use a, a process called photoresist, mm -hmm. and it's very, very, very delicate. The idea that you can put this much pressure on a, on a pattern and just, <laughs> I mean, this toner is tough. Once it's stuck on there, it's tough. Uh, yeah. One thing I tried was the photo paper, yeah. and what I found is that there's a thin gelatin coating on the paper. Yes. And we're going to get, get, go there, Will. Okay. You're absolutely I'll right. Shut up, then. Okay. The, the 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 question that Will asked about heat is real important, and I'm doing things here 
a little bit to show you some stuff. Uh, if you were doing it yourself, you might tune it a little bit on the, otherwise I put the iron on six. I know, well, maybe five and a half, five is a better setting. All right, but you have to, I'm not gonna, I don't know your iron and I don't know what you're doing, but, but what you have, if you hit the perfect spot, and Will's probably done that, you get the pattern, you get the transfer, but you don't get the clay emulsion that's on the paper that transfers also. Okay? And that's the perfect spot. It's very hard to do consistently. So you have to use the other technique is you have to learn how to get rid of the emulsion. I mean the it's not it's actually the clay on the paper surface that gets going over. Mm. And yeah, you'll see it. Uh, the reason okay. I ask about the temperature is I heard one author recommend that you clamp it between two pieces of glass and, and with a, I think, a paper towel in between it and put it in the oven huh. and heat it up. Well, that might work, but I'd be... Uh, I was wondering what kind of temperature to try. Okay, here's, here's kind of... I, I've made one that I didn't clean completely pass it around to show you. Now, if this board was wet, if I dipped it in this paper, I mean in this water, it would look perfect. But when it dries, it looks like this. Okay. Yeah, I've also read where people use uh, laminate, laminators to do it. Mm -hmm. So the next step, after I get where I think I've got most of the paper off, And I can see some places where it's still there. I use a toothbrush. Again, this stuff is incredibly tough. I mean, the, you know. Hmm. Now, obviously, if you're doing the super fine stuff, the super fine lines, you probably wouldn't be quite as aggressive as I'm being here. But uh, look, I'm brushing its teeth. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm really going to town. Okay, now it turns out that actually this is not such a bad deal on the copper side because the etchant will cut it, okay, uh, if it's thin enough. But where it gets to be real critical is when you do the front side, um, front side um, silk screen because there you're not etching. What you have, what you transfer is what you get. And you, you treat it very similar to this, but there's one additional step that I'll go through here that I'll show you when we get to that step. And I might end up having to do this if it, if it gets too, too big, too, takes too much time. Do you use glossy papers because it will give up the toner as opposed to using a, a, a I use it paper. because that's what they sell at the dollar store. No, I meant as opposed to non-clay coated uh, paper. I think that when they do the non-clay, it's because the paper is actually plastic. And you see, I want the I want to be able to do that rubbing part to rub yeah. the pattern. I'm, I'm if, going, but because you want why not just plain if you, paper. if you print it on plain paper. Oh. Uh -huh. It'll then the toner it's goes hard, into it. The toner gets into the paper and it's hard okay. to get the paper all the way off. Right. Uh, okay. That's the reason the photo paper is good because it's got a gel from the coating on it. And your, your printer is on the gel from the coating. Okay, is that clean? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Looks clean? Yeah. Now it's clean to me. Looks clean? The clay is working through the glass. Does it look clean? That looks clean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now let's dry it out and find out if it's really clean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm saying is that's why I'm, I'm hoping it's not perfectly clean because I want to show you that it looked really clean. And when you dry it out, and this is probably when I'm. Let's see. I'll start. Okay. If you look at it real carefully in the DP and the date, you'll see there's a little bit 
left in there. Now at this point, if I were just doing this for myself, I'd probably go, ah, and you know, it'd be, I'd just do that. But if you look real carefully, you can see there's a little bit left. That's not near as bad as that board that I passed around. Now, the places you have to look, usually if you have any writing or really tight leads, that, that's the last place to clear this emulsion. And the other place is in the holes that are in the center of your pads. Now, if you can see any hole at all, through, otherwise if you look at a pad that has a hole in it, and a pad, the hole is white, it's still got emulsion in it. If you see a white circle but a copper center, you're fine, don't worry about it, you've got that one, okay? If you, do, if you really want to do it, you use your toothbrush a little bit more and you can get, you can get it perfect. Is that the ob objective to get all of, the, all of the white stuff off, including what's in the holes? Yes. So yes. Yes. Well, it'll etch. <coughs> it'll etch, yeah. Okay. And uh, like I say, it will, uh, if you do that, remember I said I don't smash down on it? If you smash down on it, usually what you'll end up is with a few pads that there's no hole definition in the middle anymore. Okay. And, you, and you also see the leads start to lose some of their definition. 